Blog Talk Radio. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Red Light Sports Ramble. I am Troy Otradovic, joined with the ever-wonderful Evan Watalison over in Wisconsin. I'm, I'm running out of names for you, Evan, but I have to give you one today. So today is our traditional Twitter talk. little light on Twitter today. Not a lot of topics getting thrown out. Yeah. You know, so I'm wondering if the nice weather has kept people off of Twitter. They don't have anything better to do. Or they have a lot of better things to do than be on Twitter today. So the Twitter topics were down a little bit. But we have two topics that we're going to try to get to. The first is just some Olympic talk. You know, what do we think of the Olympics, the different sports, you know, where we're doing well, where we thought we could have done better. Time permitting, we may get into the debate that we've seen going on leading up to the Combine. And that is, should Johnny Manziel be drafted number one overall? Time permitting on that one. But we're going to start with the Olympics. And before I do that, Evan, I just want to break down and I want to congratulate um, our medalists uh, when when we look at the United States gold medalist. And I'm going to bring it up here on the computer. And as I do this, you know, there are some surprises. But when we, when we go through the United States... I, I guess the biggest thing is that we, we're still not done winning gold medals. I think there's a couple sports, you know, hockey being one, women's hockey being another, that we might be able to add to our medal count. But as we start, we'll start with snowboarding. and we'll, it, This is in alphabetical order. So congratulations to Jamie Anderson, snowboarding gold medal. Josh Christensen, freestyle skiing. Merrill Davis. Figure skating with Charlie White, Caitlin Farrington in snowboarding, Sage Kotzenberg in snowboarding, Ted Lighty in alpine skiing, and David Weiss in freestyle skiing. And the reason I wanted to go through this, Evan, as we look at the Olympics so far, it's looking that the snowboarding and skiing events were dominating. That's it. Everything else, we're we're at average or below average compared to the rest of the world. So when we look at that, what's your take on that? We're dominating in snowboarding, doing pretty good in skiing. And again, these are just the gold medals. But when you look at it, is the U.S. more dominant in one one of the areas than another? What's your thought on that? Well, I'm not too surprised that we're so dominant in snowboarding, you know, because snowboarding is extremely popular here and it's been for ages. And there's been, a, there was a time where, you know, if you were an American, you weren't meddling, you know, the other countries are a little better at snowboarding. The skiing surprised me a little bit, but, you know, we've, the U.S. has usually always had a couple, you know, pretty strong skiers, you know, Pickaboo Street and Bodie, uh, Bodie Miller and, uh, Lizzie Vaughn, who, you know, people who streets obviously no longer competing, and Lizzie Vaughn didn't make it to the Olympics this year because of a knee injury. But the U.S. have always had a few very strong skiers, and it's good to see that tradition continuing. Uh, but the one sport that I'm very disappointed in, I'm quite shocked that we haven't meddled in at all. We didn't meddle in at all with speed skating. You know, we have uh, Shawnee Davis, who is expected to medal. Um, if, you know, guy, guy from Chicago who's pretty – you know, pretty top, top of the line. You know, top of the line uh, speed skater failed to medal. Allison Diedrich, a Wisconsin native uh, from Hales Corner, she failed to medal. Just to name two of them, and it was just kind of shocking that in speed skating, a sport that we typically do pretty well in, you know, track record shows with the Paolo Ono and Bonnie Blair and Dan J- Jansen, Eric Hayden. You know, speed skating is one that we typically do very well in. And we didn't medal, period. And that just kind of surprises me quite a bit. Well, it does. I mean, there's a training center right there in Wisconsin. You know, we usually yeah, do. Yeah, Milwaukee, the tennis center. <laughs> exactly. And you're, you're absolutely right about speed skating. You're thinking we're going to rack up a few medals in that event. But the whole, the whole, I guess, debacle 
that came out after is now they're changing uniforms. So I'm listening to this report thinking, does a uniform really affect you that much to not win a medal? Or do we just have to kind of put our hands up and say, the rest of the world has caught up with us and they've done better because I can understand the aerodynamics of having to have the uniform with speed skating and all of those things. But what is your thought on that, Evan? Do you think it was the uniforms that caused them not to medal? Or do you just think the talent level was better than the United States? Um, I don't know enough about speed skating to figure out what could have been along with the uh, uniforms to warrant for poor performance. Like, I don't know, like, I know aerodynamics and stuff and has to fit and feel a certain way so the performers are comfortable. But one report that I had read is that they, you know, usually they'll practice in their, you know, the uniforms of the Olympics prior to the games, and they never did in these uniforms. So I guess if you're uncomfortable in what you're wearing, that could affect your performance a little bit. You know, when I played football, if the pants didn't fit just right, I was uncomfortable on the field. If I'm uncomfortable on the field, my performance might suffer a little bit. So I guess I can kind of see that angle a little bit if they're not comfortable wearing them. But I think part of it has to do with the rest of the world starting to catch up and the U.S. needs to figure things out for uh, South Korea. Yeah, well, they're not getting any medals this year. Not in speed skating. You know, it was it was actually kind of a downer a little bit, you know, because I'm not a huge, and I, I told you this and the listeners know, I don't tune in to the Olympics and watch every minute of the Olympics, nor do I even DVR it. But when I do watch it, I was watching some of the speed skating, and it just didn't, it just looked like we were out-talented. Looks like the other countries had faster people than us. Again, I've never speed skated in my life. So the whole thing about the uniform, to me, I don't know. I can understand being uncomfortable in it. But then, like you're saying, why didn't they practice in these uniforms and give a practice run and then would have known, hey, this this doesn't feel right? You know, maybe they could or could not change the uniform. I don't know. You know, if there's a listener or somebody that's listening to this, that knows that answer, could they have changed their uniform prior to the event? I'd love to know. So if anybody's listening... Yeah, well, I know they changed them. All right. I was just going to say, I'd love to know. So somebody let us know. Yeah. Well, I know they changed them before the final events, and that didn't seem to help too much, though, because they still didn't medal. Yeah, it's it's just crazy that there's this big... you know, And I call it an excuse. You know, I I call it an excuse. You know, sometimes you just have to say, we got beat. And that's what happened in speed skating. You know, they got beat by other countries that had faster people. You know, the events that I do watch, though, um, you know, hockey is one of them. We'll get to that in a little bit. But you had mentioned the skiing, and you had brought up a name, and you brought up Bodie Miller. And there was a huge outcry about the interview that happened with him, Evan. And I have my opinion on it. You and I talked about it in the pre-show. But I'll let you fill the listeners in. You know, people that follow the Olympics know exactly what we're talking about. But what do you think about that Bodie Miller interview? You know, just so if the listeners haven't heard, maybe they were, you know, hanging out under a rock or something, and they, you know, hear about it. Um, but basically, after Bodie Miller won the bronze medal at an, in an event, uh, he was interviewed afterwards. And the lady who interviewed him, who's not a, a usual reporter, it's not like it's her profession. She's just doing it. You know, she's a former Olympian herself. And, you know, Bodie Miller just lost his brother about a year ago. And his brother was competing to try to make it in the Olympics, too. So she asked him, you know, why so emotional? And then she asked him, uh, you know, brought up that I'm sure you really would have uh, liked Chili, you know, his brother, nickname for his brother, to experience this with you. You know, what, you know, did you do this for him? Uh, was this win for, you know, was this medal for him? And then she asked him, uh, tip, you know, you uh, looked up at the sky, you know, seemed to say 
face on, we noticed that. Who are you talking to? And then Brody, Brody Miller proceeded to break down and uh, tear up and had to step away and was, you know, being consoled by his wife because he broke down in tears, you know, regarding his brother. And there's a huge outcry about how she crossed the line. She, she was, you know, wrong. She crossed the line and whatnot. And me personally, I don't have an issue with the interview at all. I, you know, like I guess the second and third question probably could have been tied into one question, but I don't have a problem with it at all. You know, they asked him why you were so, what, what's going through your mind, why are you so emotional, what's going through your mind. They people ask that question all the time after uh, uh, after any of that. Like Richard Sherman was asked what's going through your mind after he deflected that pass. That's asked all the time, in, in, you know, in, in big big things like that. You know, what's going through your mind, and he kind of himself opened them, you know, opened these questions up when a pro, you know, uh, video spots leading up to the race, he was talking about losing his brother and what it meant to him and whatnot. And he's not even mad about it. He's perfectly fine with the interview. He didn't have a problem with it. So my opinion is if he doesn't have a problem with it, why should I? Well, I agree with you. And I'm going to talk about this in, in, in a sense that I don't know what the big deal is. Again, when I was flipping through and I went on to the Olympics and I heard the outcry of, oh my God, you should hear this interview and crossing the line and, you know, Bodie made Bodie Miller cry. I'm thinking, well, man, was she being disrespectful? You know, how did she cross the line? And then I listened to the interview and I'm like, really? That's what, that's what this is all about? Those questions? To me, that was crazy talk. It, it really was, Evan. Because when I first heard how hyped up they made it, I honestly thought, what, did the crazy lady interview Bodie Miller to make him cry? That's what I thought. But then I heard it, and I'm like, come on now. She's asking him legitimate questions. My mother passed away 17 years ago, Evan. And if you would sit here today, and you would start to interview me about any successes I've had in my life, anything that I had in my life, I would give credit to my mother for the way she brought me up. She was a hero in my life, and I would probably get a tear in my eye. Now, it's been 17 years. I may not break down like Bodie Miller did, but it's only been a year. So my point is, why are we so concerned that a grown man who's at the Olympics broke down and cried because he's emotional about his brother? I actually admire him for that. He has emotion. He lost a very dear, I call him a friend, in his brother. And he went out. He put it behind him. He trained and went out and did a great job in the Olympics. And for him to sit back and break down emotionally about losing his brother, I don't have a problem with it. If it's in public, in front of billions of viewers... I admire the guy for what he did in the Olympic stage. So, I don't have any problem with it. None whatsoever. And I think it got blown out of proportion. So. Yeah, like I was saying too, she's not a a journalist. That's not her profession. And, you know, I'm sure she had people in her ear telling her what questions we've been asked to begin with. And if you are upset... Don't be upset with her. Be upset with NBC, who wants the drama. They want the the drama stuff on TV. Be mad at them if you're going to be mad at anybody. But, you know, I think both of us are in agreement. There's no issue with the interview and the way it was conducted. None whatsoever. In our opinions. None whatsoever, bud. I, I After I got done, I just shook my head and said, really? You just wasted 20 minutes of my time, so I had to listen to this about this outcry over nothing? I mean, it's crazy. It literally is crazy. The things that, that get blown out of proportion, you know, it would have been different. And, and I had heard this on the commentary. And the one commentator even said, there's a barricade between the athletes and the reporters. Had he not wanted to answer that question or had he thought that a question was out of line, he could have very subtly said, I am done. I refuse to answer that and walk away. It's not like she was right next to him grabbing him by the arm, holding him there, and forcing him to answer that question. He willingly started to answer those questions, and he could have walked away at any time. So again, I don't think it's a problem. But moving forward, 
into into what I call the good stuff. Let's talk a little bit of hockey, Evan. You know, that, that relates to the sports, the Olympics. I do watch the Olympic hockey. So, you know, we got the women's hockey team. We got the men's hockey team. Which way you want to start, bud? I'll let you pick. Men or women first? Well, we can start with the women. And, you know, the women tomorrow at 11 a.m. are playing for the gold medal against Canada, looking to win their first gold medal since, I believe, 1998. The Canadians have done it the past few Olympics. And it seems that it always comes down to women's hockey to the U.S. and Canada. So, you know, obviously I'm here rooting for Team USA. A lot of Wisconsin connections on Team USA. Some of them that, you know, like grew up not too far from where I did. Like uh, the, the goalie, Jesse Vetter, of uh, Cottage Grove native. That's not too far from where I stay at. Amanda Kessel, Madison native. So, obviously I'm, you know, hoping for a USA win to see some Wisconsin natives, uh, you know, bring some gold back to the state of Wisconsin. But it should be a great matchup. Last time these two teams played, a few, uh, I think it was last week, um, Canada won 3-2, to two, and we'll see what happens this game. Hopefully Team USA tops Canada and gets to celebrate. I hope so, too. And when I look forward to this, and I look forward to the game, Canada seems to have the USA's number when it matters. And it's really going to come down to playing really fundamental, sound defense and good goaltending. If you let up against Canada and you give them an inch, that's when they're going to score. And so I think we've got to use some of our physical play, keep them out of space, slow them down, and play good, sound defense. And it's going to come down to goaltending. I mean, a 3-2 last week, but I think it's going to come down to goaltending. I could see maybe a 2-1 game in this one. This game, I could even see this game possibly going into a shootout. But I think for Team USA to, to win this game, they've, they've got to go out and they've got to, to basically flex their muscles. They're going to have to play a little bit of a physical game and use that type of pace and then really get back defensively. They have, when they turn the puck over, they've got to get people behind the puck. And then we've got to hope that the goaltending is there, which it has been. But it's going to be a good game. USA and Canada, always a good game. I do have to bring this up because we're, we're on this subject. After the USA advanced to this game, I had read a tweet, and I wish I would have faved it or something to remember who tweeted it out. It wasn't a normal follower, somebody that I interact with, but it was like women's hockey is nothing more than the USA and Canada. No other countries can compete. To, to that gist. And I kind of agree. I don't think a lot of the other countries are at the level that the USA and Canada are. But I don't think it ruins the excitement of the Olympic Games, even though it is Canada. I don't need it. Those it, it does. And but I have to agree in the sense that, you know, was everything else kind of window dressing? And it might very well have been. I mean some of those scores you see six one, five two they're getting there, though. I thought this tournament was probably more competitive than the last Olympics. And it will just take time, sort of like Women's World Cup. And I know you're not a big soccer guy, Evan. But there was a while there where there was only a few countries that you knew were going to be in the World Cup finals. And I think it's slowly picking up. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And getting very competitive. So... You know, as we move into 2018 Winter Olympics, maybe at that point there might be a surprise country that comes out and can battle the USA and Canada. But until then, this is going to be a great game. I'm actually, this this one I will DVR, even though I'll find out the result while I'm at work, but I'll still go home and watch the game. So that takes us to the men. They're battling Canada, but it's not for gold, but it's in the tournament. So what do you think about the men's team, Evan? <laughs> Yeah, well, they're uh, playing Canada, and the winner advances to the gold medal round. So it's come big implications to it. You know, a win guarantees the U.S. Um, a medal in the in, in men's hockey, either gold or silver. And I'm not sure who's on the other side of the bracket. I, have, I know Russia lost to. Uh, uh, why am I drawing a blank? Anyways, Russia lost today. So they're not in the semifinals to advance to the gold medal game. So I, I don't. So I don't know who's on the other side. But 
again, it should be a good game, U.S. versus Canada. Um, I believe it's a rematch from the last the Vancouver games where Canada did Canada win the Vancouver games? I believe so. No, but I know they played each other at some point. But um, it should be an interesting matchup. Can you know both teams have NHL players on them? Uh, U.S. hockey is playing really well. Phil Kessel, brother of a player on the women's team I just mentioned, Amanda Kessel. He had three goals in the preliminary round, first U.S. player ever to accomplish that. And then, uh, you know, he's he's been red hot. And then there's the, the hero of the shootout against Russia. Um, so all eyes are going to be on him. Uh, I think it's Ostley, something like that. You can Oshie. On that name. Um, Oshie. It, it should be a very interesting game. Pardon? Oshie. That, that's, that's who. Oh, that's right. Oshie. <laughs> And so I was. It should be interesting to see. And so the other side of your bracket, I didn't want to interrupt you there. It is Sweden and Finland. Uh, Finland, they're the ones that beat the Russians. Yeah, and so the Russian fans were a little upset that Russia got eliminated today. You know, as as they should be. You know, but when you look at that, I mean. In all honesty, the USA versus Canada, my thought here is whoever wins this game is most likely going to win gold over Sweden or Finland. I agree. And again, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying the, the other semifinal is, is not important. It's just when you look at the makeup of the talent level, you've got USA and Canada. So I think the winner... The winner of the game will win gold. The win, the loser will probably win bronze. Now, I'm always for the underdog. I always am. You know, so that may not go that way. But unfortunately, here's what I'm thinking, Evan. I think USA's playing really well. I just think Canada's got too much. I think Canada's going to win, unfortunately. You know, I know the USA is out there. They're playing some good hockey, but so is Canada. Yeah, you know, I've had a chance to watch both teams play, and... Canada just looks more fluid to me. You know, it looks like they've been they look more like they're playing a team game. USA, I see some mental lapses here and there. And if you have a mental lapse against the Canadians, guess what's going to happen? They're going to make you pay. And you, you you look at that Canadian team and I just think top to bottom, player against player, unfortunately I think Canada's going to win. That doesn't mean I'm not rooting for the USA. But I think Canada is going to beat the U.S., and I think Canada is then going to win the gold medal in the, in the Sochi Olympics. So I know people probably don't like that prediction, but I'm also going this way. I'm trying reverse psychology, Evan. If I say they're going to win, then the USA will win, so it makes me look like an idiot. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so do you think that will work? Do you think my reverse psych- do you think my reverse psychology will work? <laughs> hey, it worked a couple of times during the Packers season. It so did. We'll see. Um, yeah, I actually think the U.S. They, they just seem to be destined to go to that gold medal round. And then you know, I just I think the U.S. wins it, and I think U.S. plays for the gold, and I think they finally win the gold. Uh, I think we for the first time since the Miracle on Ice, it won't be as special as the Miracle on Ice, being that. You know, that year, 1980, it was all a bunch of uh, college kids playing against professional players, you know, throughout the rest of the world, and they managed to win the goal. So it won't be quite as special, but it will be, you know, kind of special to see. So, But I think the U.S. wins it, and they get the gold. Yeah, well, and I, I will, I would almost disagree with you a little bit. I think it'll still be special, even though it's it's NHL players. Oh, it'll be special. I'm saying it'll be special, but it just won't be as special. There will be nothing that compares to the miracle on I-7. Um, I remember when, yeah. when, when that happened, I was 10 years old. There, yeah, I just aged myself. And it was way past my bedtime on that tape delay. And by the time I had begged and pleaded and pleaded to be able to watch the game. And I remember watching that game. So it, it, there's nothing that will ever amount to the miracle on ice at all. 
But, you know, I think it'll still be special since it's been so long since America has hoisted gold in, in hockey in the Olympics. You know, and I hope you're right. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the USA wins. Because I, you know, as, as, I don't want to say I hate Canada hockey, but when they're playing the U.S., yeah, I hate them. Uh, I hate Canada hockey right now. Yeah. You know, I want Damn to. Canadians. <laughs> yeah. And people, the, the funny thing is I'm in Pittsburgh. People think I'm from Canada with my accent. Just because I'm from Green Bay, they think that's near Canada. You know, I, I don't know what these crazy people are thinking. So let's wrap up our Olympic coverage, Evan, though. And I think we do have to give some props to, to figure skating. Now, I'm not a big figure skating guy. I've watched maybe three minutes of the figure skating this year. But there was, when we're looking at the standings after the Lady Short program, the United States has put themselves in a position to possibly get a medal. They have three, three out of the top seven. You know, I guess America's new sweetheart is Gracie Gold, who's currently standing in fourth yeah. place. Then you have Ashley Wagner and Polina Edmonds. And Gracie's in fourth, Ashley's in sixth, Polina's in seven. But they've positioned themselves now for the free program to possibly get on the medal stand. And so, again, I, I'm not a big figure skater follower. I don't watch a lot of it. I may tune in and watch a little bit of it just because I've heard a lot of Gracie Gold and a lot of Ashley Wagner, and I know our couple's ice dance had won the gold. Um, so I may tune in to watch a little bit of this free program. What about you? Are you going to watch any of the figure skating? Um, Maybe. I might turn it on for a little bit. I... I would like to. See, it would, I think it would be quite funny and cool if uh, Gracie Gold had happened to win gold. Yeah. You know, with the name and all. <laughs> yeah, but that, that I might watch some of it. That that, um, that would be. So we'll see. Yeah. No, but I I thought I'd throw some props out there for talking about the Olympics because I don't think that they thought that they would be in this this position going into the free program. I mean, we didn't have the dominant figure skater this year. Like, you know, we are normally talking about skaters in every Olympics, you know, Amer you know, like, we, like I said, America's sweetheart, you know, the, the teenage sensation. There wasn't a lot of hype going into this Olympics about our skating. So it's nice to see that they're being no, successful no, no, no. and doing some good things. I mean, it just goes down to the coaching, you know, and believing and having an opportunity to go out on such a stage and be able to compete. So I'm proud of all of them because I don't think, and they probably didn't yeah. even think that they would be in such a good position going into the free program. There's a lot of great competition from when I listened to the, the commentary about it and the wrap-ups and things of that nature uh, across the world. And so for them to be where they are, you know, that's a, that's a great accomplishment. Now, maybe one of them can bring home a medal. That would even be better. So with that said, Bo, we're just under two minutes, and I know that – you know, I, I guess, you know, a show that we endorse and a show that we, you know, we like to talk about is home court sports. And for every, anybody that's listening that follows Evan or follows me, you have to go to this Twitter handle and it's at, 90 seconds. at LSFNJ and wish him a happy belated birthday. Because I meant to do it on the show yesterday, Evan, but we got so caught up in our topic and I had to run after the show onto a conference call that we just didn't have time to get that out yesterday. But again, happy belated birthday, LSFNJ. Go on Twitter. Wish him a happy belated birthday. With that said, Evan, it is Wednesday night, which is our traditional Twitter talk. I also want to give props to Home Court Sports. They have their Twitter or their blog talk show tonight. Those of you that listen on Blog Talk, go find them. They've got a great show. I'm going to try to listen in live tonight. If there's anything that I think I can chime in on, I may give their show a call. But with that said, bud, I'm going to talk about tomorrow's guest. You can talk about Friday's guest. Tomorrow, we have Tony Lynn Starr coming in. Daytona 500 preview. She's going to talk about the drivers. She's going to talk about some of the preview for the 500. Give her favorite. Give her predictions. It's going to be a great show. We're bringing NASCAR to the Red Light Sports Ramble tomorrow, Evan. What about Friday? Yep. Friday, we're going back basketball. Um, I'm sure you know our 
10 seconds. Have seen the billboards around Milwaukee, the SaveOurBucks.com, the movement going around, and Paul Henning, who is uh, one of the people behind that movement, is going to be on to talk about what it is exactly SaveOurBucks.com is and what they're hoping to accomplish with the movement. So that should be very exciting to see or to listen to. Yeah, so we, we've got a great end of the week for the Red Light Sports Ramble. We've, we've got a guest tomorrow with NASCAR. We've got more Bucks basketball on Friday. So with that said, everyone, our time is up today. Evan and I, thank you for listening as always. We'll see you all at the next Red Light. We'll get back at you tomorrow.